Hey and welcome to the Dark Alliance with Aragon. In this video I just want to give my impressions of the game after playing for about 10 hours or so. I went and just grinded out one of the characters. My impressions I guess will be a little bit biased in terms of the gameplay that I've experienced with this dwarf. I went and leveled him all the way up to the max of 20, getting a pretty high gear score and we can pretty much go and conquer any of the difficulty levels in I think any of the content. Now with regards to this game, do I enjoy it? Am I having fun? Well, I currently am indeed. I really love playing this game just with lots of people, whether I know them or they're random people. Of course, if you know them and you're all in a voice chat and you're happy talking to each other, it can be a whole lot more fun than just running with randoms. In my opinion, upon playing this game, I feel the game lacks a social aspect. It's much harder to just run with random people and actually get to know them. Many people won't really use the voice chat and that's all there is available in the game to talk to each other. You don't have a chat which you can just type. I find it really needs that. It also needs, in my opinion, at least something where we can trade with one another. As of right now, all there really is is that you just have your character and that's it. It seems kind of like a, a solo ambition to get yourself maxed out. There's not really any reason to go and max out your character other than unlocking content and then trying to do it on the maximum difficulty. And where the game really shines is when you have a party and you're all having fun and you, you run through the dungeons and you put it on the maximum difficulty. You start forming strategies, what's best to do here and there, whether it's run past the enemies, whether it's to kill them so you can rest in a certain spot or just to get the loot bonus and things like that. So as for the actual gameplay and the combat of the game, I am really enjoying it. It's definitely a big difference compared to Neverwinter. It's a lot more strategic in terms of what buttons you actually press. Like you do have a right click and a left click and they're both two different kind of at wills as it were. Now where it goes tricky is when you actually have to combine let's say your movement keys and those at wills and you get entirely different powers. We can see that when we look in our moves tab here. This dwarf has 12 different moves. These two here just unlock abilities and all of these moves are as such like tap forward and tap the left mouse button and you'll get this rolling boulder. And you have other ones as well like shield slam, tap backwards and right click. You have all these different combos which you can chain together and it gives the, the game kind of a high skill ceiling as it were. Now when running through dungeons and ranking up the difficulty to like really high, I found the way that this game really works is you try and make sure that the enemies aren't hitting you by hitting them first. From what I found, it's mainly offensive based. You just want to be getting in your character up with all of those offense stats, getting that crit chance high, that crit damage high, and also depending on what class you are, whether you need physical damage or elemental damage or whatever. And yeah, you just go and you stun lock enemies. Many of the bosses can be stun locked. And if you're against a boss which you can't stun lock, you can just dodge roll out of the way. Yes, even attack has a dodge roll like this. Every class as well has a block like this guy has with his shield. You can block your damage. Now all of these abilities are limited to you by your stamina. That's the green bar below our HP on the top left. So when we use our attacks, they use up our stamina. And when we use our special moves, so it's not just this at will, then it will deplete our maximum stamina as you can see there. And this maximum stamina can go so low to the point where, yeah, you really won't be able to do much and you really have to rest to gain that back. You can either rest or you can use a stamina potion like we can use here. You drink your stamina potion and that goes back up. So with all of these powers limited to your stamina, that creates the dynamic in the game of kind of balance and you having to make sure you don't run out of stamina. Because when you run out of stamina, you literally can't do anything except to run away. But when you do run out of stamina, you 
do regenerate it pretty quick after just doing nothing for a few seconds. Although, of course, it will depend on your character and what statistics you have. So, overall, I find the combat system pretty nice. It's definitely something to get used to, to not, like, spam press your buttons. Because if you spam your buttons, like, three times, then you've committed to that animation and you're actually going to attack for three times. However, you can, of course, animation cancel or just cancel what power you were doing by dodge rolling. Unfortunately, blocking doesn't allow you to do that, which I find really annoying. I really wish they could make blocking be able to cancel also the action you're currently doing, and that way you can immediately block incoming fire. Now, a lot of boss mechanics don't rely on either telegraphing their big attacks, or they won't let you block them. So the only way to avoid a big boss's attack is literally getting out of the way. The way you see big telegraph in this game from a boss is when the boss is outlined in red. You know they're going to do a big unavoidable hit that you just need to move out of its area to not get hit. I believe you get immunity frames when you dodge. So my initial impressions of the combat system is it's nice. It's unique, at least from the games I've played. However, it can feel a bit clunky in time, especially when you panic and you press a ton of buttons and then your character just goes and does a series of different things that you didn't want them doing. You just have to remember that you can always just dodge and you can cancel anything that you have pressed. And it will only use a very little amount of stamina to dodge around, so you should be able to dodge quite a lot. As for, like, the encounter powers, you could say, you can see there they're bound to one button and you have two of them. Like, that's the hold button, cast the anvil, and then a press of the button will bring me swinging like this. And then you have your ultimate ability, where you can charge it up just by being in combat, or you can use these potions. And every class has a unique one. Unfortunately, you only have one to choose from, and that's it. You don't have a choice. Fortunately, you can always use your ultimate charge to attack with one of my combos, at least I can on the dwarf. And I can use it up and do a bigger hit. Now what I really like is this potion system and the way you don't actually buy them. Once you have them, you have them, right? And you can only unlock a certain amount. And those potions, when you run into a dungeon, when you consume them, that's them consumed. You can only recharge them after having a short rest or by getting lucky when you go looting. You might find a few in a chest somewhere. So you are limited to that, but when you play party content, what can happen a lot is you just keep reviving each other, especially on the harder difficulties where you might get one shot, because that's definitely a thing. If you don't know how to dodge a monster's big attacks, you're generally gonna die pretty quick if you're playing on higher difficulties. Otherwise, mobs can even like two-shot you if you're not careful. So you generally want to be on the offensive and make sure to knock them over, stun them, those kind of things, so that they don't actually get a chance to attack. If you leave a mob by himself and let him just rain arrows on you, you're going to die pretty fast. The content is pretty nice. I love those dungeons and the versatility with running through optional areas, getting additional loot. The time, at least from what I found, can be worth it to go and pick up those optional areas, especially when you're looking for more loot, as chests will drop loot along with completing the dungeon. So some dungeons you might want to go and explore more, some dungeons you might just want to rush through and get to the boss, especially when you come to the point where you just literally want to grind. Rather than concentrating and learning new dungeons, you might just want to repeat one you've done before and, and just, yeah, grind it over and over. It can be a bit boring, but that's on you. There's 20 odd dungeons. So overall, do I recommend uh, getting this game? Well, I'm not sure. It really is up to you. The game in general, I feel, as again, is not too social. If you're just looking for a social game to find new friends to play with, then this is probably not the game. It's a game you want to play with friends you already have. A game that, yeah, you're going to jump in, spend hours of fun just running through those dungeons, exploring, dying, and having a laugh. And ultimately competing against each other who can perform the best. Because this game pretty nicely has, like, the charts at the very end where you can see your performance and you, you're ranked based on, like, how much damage you dealt, how many enemies you killed, how many allies you revived, how much damage you took, how many team attacks you did, all of those. And then you're ranked and then... 
yeah, you don't really get any other rewards. You just get bragging rights over your teammates. That's it. And then there's the whole system of gearing up your character efficiently, getting the proper stats. Are you going to play offensively? Are you going to play defensively? Those kind of things. It's all great fun. But if you're skeptical about the game, I know there's a lot of negative reviews, just wait on it. We'll see how this game goes. It might get good, it might just die out, you know? It could just be a game that they just stop developing and then that's it. If people aren't interested in it, then alas, it's fun. I've had great fun playing it and I'll probably continue to do so. Might pick up some of the other characters and see how they play. But as of right now, I really enjoy playing Brunar the Dwarf. And I'll continue doing so until I've completed all of the dungeons and got some pretty neat loot. Like, I, I really want a different shield and a different axe. Last words, just make sure you play this with friends. It's not much fun solo. You're just going to get demotivated and really, you're just going to be like, what's the point in playing? So if I presented this well, consider leaving the video a like. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing. And we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.